Welcome to Egg Money Quilts. I'm Eleanor Burns. Many beautiful scrappy quilt patterns came out of the 1930s. Well, this Dresden plate quilt was made by Ruth Dietrich Shadwell from 1930 to 1933. Ruth may have lived on a farm in Plainfield, Iowa, because some of these scrappy fabrics are feed sacks. And she may have even sold her extra eggs and used her egg money for the bright pink fabric often called bubblegum pink or bazooka pink. Well, you can see it here in the four wedges and in the circles. Well, generally, the circle covered the center of the wedges, but Ruth got creative. And then she hand-stitched a black blanket stitch around the scalloped edges of each plate. It's a double bed size with more scallops on two sides. And she did beautiful quilting throughout. Well, there's always a story about how a quilt name originated. The Dresden plate story goes back to Dresden, Germany, where Dresden factories made beautiful dishes with gold trimmed edges and scalloped in shape. Well, I can't read German. But this poster from Dresden says something about an exhibit of handwork and craft trade from Dresden in 1889 in the old town. Well, in the early 1920s, a quilt maker may have taken one of her treasured scallop plates and traced around the outside edge on a piece of paper. And then as she folded it on the scallops, she would have her wedge pattern. Great, easy to do. Now, Dresden plates were also made with pointed wedges. I bought the antique patches and I needed one more to complete the setting. And I challenge you to find the one that I made. You know, it's hard to tell because I did use vintage fabric. Then I set it together with traditional lattice and nine patch corners. My cousin Carol Ann did the quilting and it is beautiful. Well, from beautiful Dresden plates to depression glass. Join me. Depression glass comes in all shapes and sizes. Well, you could get a little cup and a saucer. It's just so cute. Or a watering glass. My favorite, a creamer. Or how about a little dessert glass? Well, they were very inexpensive in the 30s. Why, well, you could even get them free in a flower bag. But now, you know, they're quite expensive as a collectible item. They're just great. Well, we are using the exact same colors in our quilt as a depression glass. Green, oh, that's a great color. And pink. Now you could get blue depression glass and even red. And amber or yellow, but I don't think there was purple. Well, this is sampler one. The blocks finish at 12 inches. Now this is sampler two, and that Dresden is a big old 18 inch block. Oh, it just goes so fast. Well, the favorite color of depression glass was pink, and I love that pink too. So I picked a pink apron to work in today. Now what's unique about this apron is that it was a clothesline or a clothespin apron. See, the ladies would just put these aprons on, fill it with clothespins, hang all their clothes on the line. Very convenient. We should wear more aprons. You know, the Dresden plate started out with a curved top and the women would actually sew these wedges together, turn under this curved edge and hand applique it down. Somewhere along the way, it changed to pointed. And this is the template that we're using. Doesn't even look like a point yet. But you could use the cardboard templates. Now the strip for the 12 inch is four and a fourth inches. The strip for the 18 inch is six inches. You need five different fabrics. And I have them all lined up here. Blue, yellow, purple, ah, oh, beautiful. Now take them and stack them so that they're nice and 
even on the edges, put the lightest color on the top. Well, I could trace all of these on here, but I am going right for the acrylic template. Oh, with rotary cutters and rulers, that's what we want to do. Now you line it from top to bottom and just hold it down and cut along one side. And I like to just take this piece that I cut this is one whole quarter right here in this stack. Get rid of that edge. Now the template just turns up and down like this. Let me line it up. You use the same line that you cut from and just cut across there. This particular piece is four and a fourth by nine and a half and I'm lucky I'm getting four stacks out of there. That's exactly what I wanted. Now turn your pieces over so that they're right sides up and we're ready for sewing. Cuts pretty quick, doesn't it? You don't have to spend a lot of time doing that. Okay, I'm just going to take one stack and basically sew one fourth of it together. You'll just repeat this over and over. Take your top piece, fold it right sides together, and start at the fold and sew along this little edge. This is easy to do. Okay, grab hold of your threads, needle down if you have it. That's the first one. Just pick up the second one and fold it right sides together, assembly line sew. You know, my uh, mother-in-law, Helen Burns, had a movie theater in the 1930s in Burgettstown near Pittsburgh, and she told me about movie night. Oh, everybody loved it. Or dish night. That was the night things weren't going so well. They had to get people going to the movie. So if they came, they got a free dish. I know that families put together whole sets of dishes just going to the movies on dish night. She's even given me a couple of them that um, she collected and remembered. Okay, this is just a set, one quarter, a set of five, just make them dance. Well, after you have them all sewn together, then the next step is to clip them apart and you could decide, do you want to trim the top or not? If you want to trim, just take that quarter inch seam down to about an eighth of an inch. I'm going to take this one and show you how to press it in the next step. Well, I have this neatest little gadget that makes it easier. It's just a square that an X is drawn on, makes it so easy to do. All you do is take your finger in here, turn it, pop it right side out. I've got a point already. And then you just take this little gadget, insert it, and line up that seam, push out that point as best as you can, and then just press it. Oh, I think I'll get this all lined up much better. Give it a little steam and you're ready to go on. Now, I do want to do a little picking with my stiletto. So I'm just going to put the stiletto, point of the stiletto right in here, pull it out so it's very perky. Well, I'm going to just set all of this aside. You know me. I've been busy. I've got all my pieces all lined up and ready to continue on. The next step is to line up exactly the color order that you want and then sew it together into pairs. Let's just take the second one, flip it right sides together to the first one, line up those edges. Oh, this is so much easier than those curved ones. I agree. We should switch to the point. Okay, that's the first pair. You're going to take the next two, flip right sides together, line up right along this side, feed that through. Now, it doesn't really matter about the, this edge because that's going to be covered up with a circle. Okay, that's two pairs. Now, there's a total of five, so let's just lay them back out. This was the first two, one and two, then this is three and four, and then we've got five. So all you need to do is sew these all together into a quarter, and then take the four quarters. Watch this. This is going to be like magic. We're going to make a circle in no time. So I'm just going to sew this into a circle, and I'll show you how to go on. The trick to turning under the raw edge on that center circle 
is fusible interfacing. Now this is lightweight, non-woven fusible. It has a smooth surface on the top and then it has a bumpy fusible surface underneath. Now you could go ahead and draw your circles on a plain piece of fusible. If you draw your circle for your 12 inch Dresden, it's a four and a half inch circle. Now the 18 inch Dresden needs a six and a half inch circle or you could just get it printed, and I'm going for printed. Now when you place your fusible on there, you put your fabric right side up, and you put the fusible side next to the right side of the fabric. Just make a stack of it. Now I'm gonna use needle down, and I have an applique foot on my sewing machine. It's an open toe so that I can just see on that line. Now I put a smaller stitch on, 1.8, oh, which is just a nice little stitch so you don't tear out the interfacing. And if you can, lighten the pressure on your presser foot, then go ahead and do that. That means that you can just kind of swing right around this circle without raising your presser foot and moving it. And when you get back to the beginning, just go ahead and overlap those stitches. There it is. Gosh, if you went off the line, who's going to know? Nobody will tell. Now, once you've sewn, you take your um, sharp scissors and trim one eighth inch away. Just zip right around there. And I'm just going to cut that off because we're moving. I have one already trimmed. Now, take your sharp scissors and cut a hole into the fusible interfacing. Oh, be careful you don't cut into that circle. And then just put your fingers in there, turn it right side out. You know, it's really sad. Whenever the depression was over, Many of the people saw those depression glass stitches as a sign of really poor times. And do you know that many families just pack those beautiful dishes up, put them in the attic, or even threw them away? Can you imagine that? Well, there's my circle. It's looking great ready to go on. Now I finished my whole plate earlier and I started to press it. I just want to finish it for you. Now to keep it flat in a circle, you leave it laying flat on your pressing mat. And now each seam is pressed open. So you just with your fingers kind of split that seam open and press those seams down. So you can see all of those seams are pressed open. It's looking good. And then from the right side, beautiful. Now the background square is cut a little oversized. It is a 13 inch square. And after we do all of our sewing on it, then we're going to trim it back to 12 and a half inches. So we can find a placement on this. Take your um, background square, fold it in half once one way, and then open and fold it in half the other way. This is just to give you some good old guidelines. It would be really great if you got this on straight. Now, take your plate, and this is, this is the thing that you need to think about. Um, you actually have to turn it with the dominant fabrics kind of going out towards the corners. And to me, when I look at this, the dominant fabric is blue. You actually line up the center seam with the fold. And let me get that all lined up here and here and all four parts so you actually get it centered. But you'll notice if you don't put it on with the dominant fabrics going into the corners, you'll go, oh my gosh, what did I do? Well, the center comes next, and if you put little quarter marks on your um, fusible, then you can just center that up and drop that in place as well. Let me get that all lined up, looking good. How about a quarter of an inch? Move it down. All right, some steam right on your piece and press it right in place. And that's actually going to hold that whole center just so you can go ahead and get it pinned. Now, I like to do a lot of pinning on this step. I like to go into each one of the wedges so that it holds it flat and doesn't slide around because in the next step, you can choose. Are you going to sew this down by hand or are you going to sew it down by machine? You know, in the Depression years, a lot of these blocks were sewn down with black thread. Black thread, hand sewn, 
in the blanket stitch. Now I'm going to show you in some red thread how that might look. I'm just going to select stitch number seven on my machine. Oh, it popped right up. Okay, whenever you do this stitch, you do the straight stitch on the background and you take a bite in. You can make an adjustment, you can see. I'm going right down along one side. I'm nearly at the corner and I'm going to pivot in, use needle down and turn to the next little point. And then I'm just heading up this side, taking the straight stitch on the background and taking a bite in. The trick is when you get to the corner. And what I like to do by machine is actually stitch past the corner, take a bite over, and then raise my foot and pivot. And just keep on going around the outside edge. Now after you're finished with the outside edge, you've got to go around the center as well. Well, I'll tell you, this is one fun block to do. Let me show you some smaller projects. The Dresden plate patch is also for the holidays. Well, Nancy Loftus took the 18 inch Dresden plate and she turned it into a really cute placemat. Now she has some holiday dishes and with that right in the center, ooh, it's a festive table setting. Now she finished off her outside edges with some brown thread. Same thing, by machine, went the whole way around there. I love it that you can get this all done by machine. Very bright. Well, I also love red and green. Oh, all the fun at Christmas. So I did this little holiday wall hanging. Oh my gosh, you can do this in half a day. Give one as gifts. Now my friend said it was worth making this project just to learn how to make that big old floppy bow. Well, it has a folded border around it and then a nice binding to finish it off. You don't even need to do a lot of quilting on it. It's just fun to hang every year. Now notice that it doesn't have the circle right in the very center. It's actually the background that you see. Now, once you finish your, your wedges and you sew them together, if that center doesn't look round, go ahead and make a template for a circle and trace a circle right in the middle and then stay stitch on your lines. Now see, this is just, oh, it's like 2.0 stitch length. Stay stitching around there and that'll keep the ends from coming out as well. And then just roll under those edges on the stay stitching, pin it good so nothing falls apart. And then you finish the inside edge the same way as you finish the outside edge. Well, the whole wall hanging is framed with a, just a festive folded border. A folded border is a one and a fourth inch strip that is pressed wrong sides together. Now you cut it the exact same length as your background square and then you place raw edge to raw edge. So on two opposite sides with a long stitch, 10 stitches per inch so that it doesn't pucker up. And then once you have the two sides, you do top and bottom, but you do not fold out that first piece. You just overlap right here in the corners and that makes a really nice finish. Now the borders are four and a fourth inches wide. You're gonna do the sides, cut them exactly the same size as your background as well. And then top and bottom are last. And finally, we get to the bow. Just that cute floppy bow. It starts out with a really wide strip. It's a nine inch wide strip and it's 34 inches long. That takes just about the whole strip. Well, you want to draw those angles on the ends. So just take your ruler and mark in one and a half inches. I'm just going to use a permanent marker here. Put a little dash at one and a half inches and then angle down to the corner just like so and repeat that step on the opposite end. It just goes from one and a half inches in down to the corner. I already did my stitching on that one. And then you're just going to stitch into the middle. Leave about a three inch opening right in the middle. And I'm going to start right there. I think if I start there, I can just zip along with my quarter inch foot and get that done very quickly. Well, I never was given too many um, Dresden plate 
depression glass uh, pieces from my grandma, but she did give me her German plates. Well, it's not from Dresden, Germany, but she gave me all of her Bavarian china. And let me tell you, I love to serve my family, serve their dinner on that special china. And they always go, oh, no, Mom, it's too special. We can't use that. And I say, well, that's what that china is for, to eat on. Well, I have both of those ends stitched. I stitched into the middle, left an opening to turn it. And so now just take your ruler, take your cutter, cut off those ends on the diagonal. That's one end, get rid of it. And then take the second piece and cut it and get rid of it. Now, turn this right side out. And once you turn it right side out, we're going to do a little marking on Oh, get this going here. Pull it out one side and then in the other. You sure need to pick out those corners with a stiletto. Gosh, what would we do without the stiletto? And then once you have that all arranged, then take it and fold it right in the middle and mark in nine inches. I'm just going to put my six by 12 right on there, draw a line and stitch on that line. This is going so fast. Just stitch right through there and then take this piece and line up that fold. I'm just going to take kind of like this, open it up. Ta-da! And push this back down. This is going good. It's nearly there. And then this piece is just a four inch by six and a half inch piece. You just take this center piece, wrap it around, kind of squish that middle bow up. Just squish it up good like that. And then just take and stitch that piece on the back side. And then your bow is just going to go in place right on top of your wreath. Do a little stitching around the edges. It'll be gorgeous. Well, you know, another name for Dresden plate is sunflower. Oh, we've got to look at this one. It's just beautiful with 20 golds and yellows. What a selection of fabric. All those wedges. This is the 12 and a half inch block. And then pick out just a great brown. You can do all this nice stitching in the center to represent the seeds. Oh, it's just a wonderful quilt to give as a gift. You know, quilters don't do dishes. So this is one plate you don't need to put in the dishwasher. Dresden plate patterns come in all shapes and sizes. McCall Patterns put out this one with a unique Dresden plate block with a fancy border. And they also included a fan quilt. Now the date on the inside of the envelope is February 10th, 1940. Well, the pattern says to transfer the patterns onto cardboard and then cut the pieces using the cardboard. And there is also a tissue pattern included for the quilting. Well, eventually boxes of pieces end up coming my way and I love it. Loretta Smith passed this one on from a neighbor with the stipulation, I finish it. Well, the block is interesting with both scallop patches and pointed patches. It's also known as Friendship Circle. Well, instead of needle turn, I turned under the raw edges with fusible interfacing. That was easy. Now, the center is just interesting, too. It's made of four pointed ovals, and then once they're trimmed and turned, they're just fused in place as well. Pretty tricky. Well, I have a whole box of blocks to finish, and I will, because I want to get to the border. Now, it's an ice cream cone border made with two different pieces. To go around the corner, it's just another ice cream cone. Very traditional looking. Just great. Well, you can make an interesting piece border for your Dresden plate quilt with your wedge template. 
All you have to use is the large one for the 18 inch Dresden. Just stack up a variety of half strips and layer cut them a whole way across. You know, I have 16 stacked up right here. And then you restack them so they look very scrappy. Take the top one, put it on the bottom. Take the next two, put it on the bottom, the next three, and so on down so that you have a different one the whole way across the strip. Next, you take a pair and you assembly line sew them. They're turned in opposite directions. All you have to do is offset them about a quarter of an inch and just chain them together. Then once you have a whole stack of pairs done, go back and sew them together. This is what they look like. Straighten the outside edges and sew them to the top. It's just a really cute finish. You'll have a good time. Well, it's just as the McCall pattern says. It's another old quilt for the modern quilt makers. Enjoy. Enjoy.